Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isertel back at it again. Nutrition myths video number six, supplements. Yep, that's the punchline. Supplements are basically a myth. So let's get into it. We're gonna talk about the claim because I gotta be a little bit more specific about what I mean by supplements. Reasons the claim is wrong, reasons that supplements are mythical in many ways, and some grains of truth, of course, and then best practices as usual. So here is the claim, and I would say it has at least five factors to it, five subclaims. Subclaim number one, that supplements can add tons of muscle and strength to you if you begin to take them. Now, folks, TLDR, a real talk, I don't mean the shit you buy in the, behind the dumpster at the back of the GNC. I mean over-the-counter, legal in the United States supplements, okay? So all the jokes aside, and they're funny jokes, tons of jokes that I won't say, supplement supplements, right? not special sports supplements, okay? Real supplements that you can buy at the store, it is a myth that they can add tons of muscle and strength uh, if you begin to take them, okay? But we'll get into the specifics of that in a bit. Claim number two is that supplements can help you burn tons of fat, changing your body radically. I mean, you see this in before and after pictures of like, took, you know, Zeta Lean 5 and like, and was a piece of shit. And then now is like Superman. It's like, oh, holy shit, like this shit burns fat like crazy. Does it though? We'll see in a sec that the answer is definitely not. And I spared you the second. Number three, this is a big one. And this is one that you may no longer think but a lot of folks who are new to the fitness industry, which you may be, definitely think this, I used to think this, that the taking of supplements is a real big difference between the people in shape versus not in shape, okay? A lot of you folks are in shape and you've traveled around, sometimes you get into random conversations with people, whether it's a waitress at a diner, when you're wearing a cutoff shirt, you're sitting at an airplane, bus stop, school, whatever. You notice a lot of the times, what people say is like some combination of like, oh my God, like you look great, like you're ripped. And the next thing they say, like maybe five out of 10 times is like, so like, like what supplements do you take? You know, like do, do, you, do, you, eat, do you eat protein supplements? Or do, you, do you take a, like what multivitamin do you take? And every time I know you guys, it like it, I'm, one of, I'm one of you in this regard. Shit hurts us to hear because we're like, oh, no, you're being lied to, okay? It's not true that what separates the haves and have-nots of fitness is the, that they use supplements. It's totally not true, right? We know what is true is genetics, work ethic, and for exotic differences, special sports supplements you can't buy at Walmart or GNC. Number four, another huge one. People are really of the opinion that the kinds and brands of supplements you use are super important. Legitimately, people ask me all the time at the gym, what brand of protein are you? Who gives a flying fuck? Protein's all the fucking same, unless they're lying to you and putting some shit in there, which companies do every now and again, but they do very rarely. Most fundamental protein brands are just about the same. Like. You don't ask a super morally obese person like, so what kind of fast food did you eat to get like this? Was it Taco Bell? Was it McDonald's? No, 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 no. I can tell. It's Wendy's, isn't it? They're just going to be like, look, I just eat whatever. It's all delicious and it all is fundamentally the same shit and it all adds body fat. The same thing is true with supplements, but there's this huge myth that like the very specifics count. Like I used to be a chump and I didn't have a girlfriend. Then I started taking mono-hydroxy-creatine from Excel Labs. Good God, I hope that's not a real company that's going to sue us for this shit. <laughs> uh, and then I like and grew 18 abs on my face. People think that. People think it and it's total bullshit. And number five, kind of to tie all of them together, people, and this is subsumed in all of these, is think that supplements are this big tool in the toolbox that will make the difference in your results. They think like, oh, I have to start taking supplements, right? Like that's what serious fitness people do. Now, I said that it's all wrong. Why is it all wrong? This is a most simple shit. Sorry if this disappoints you because it's not super intricate. It's just all not true. How do we know it's not true? Mechanistically, the processes, the pathways that supplements activate don't have the throughput and the magnitude of causative power to make such changes, right? They just don't. Like 
the only thing the creatine monohydrate pathway does is boost your performance by like this much because no ability as a pathway to do anything more than that. It's a, uh, here's a similar analogy. Uh, people say like, you know, like uh, <laughs> if you use, this is again, a stupid bullshit myth unrelated, you know, humans only use 10% of their brain. And if they used a hundred, they could levitate and fly and like move shit with their minds. You have a fucking gravity generator in your head? Is there like organs we just didn't see? The human body can alter space time? That's just not possible. Now, can you, if you used more of your brain better, again, that's a bullshit myth, could you like run a little bit faster, maybe jump a little higher or think a little quicker, be a little bit more socially apt? Okay, I can believe that. Well, fuck, you're not gonna have eye lasers coming out of your shit because show me the organ that makes a laser. Do you guys know how much energy throughput it takes to fucking fire a laser? By the way, doesn't it burn your eyes coming out? The whole thing is mind boggling, right? And people look at these supplements like, what kind of protein are you taking? Is it gonna magnify my gains? Because show me in this algebraic equation how protein is supposed to magnify your gains. It can't, it doesn't. So physiologically on a rationale basis, it doesn't add up. And you say, okay, well, let's go to the research. The research is the following. Studies show a very small set of benefits for for sure a couple of classes of supplement. Whey and casein proteins work, creatine works, again, just a little bit, stimulants work, maybe carbohydrate powders have their place, and daily vitamins and some minerals, maybe like vitamin D, zinc, et cetera, a couple of the main ones, daily multivitamin, multimineral is, is a good start. Those work and they have tiny effects, not eye laser shit, like thinking a little faster at a party kind of shit. That's it, right? That's Those are really just the confirmed supplements that work and almost all the rest, almost all the rest, do nothing we can detect. So when people say like, do supplements work really well? You just, the research is like, no. Some of them, most of them don't do shit. And some of them just do like minor stuff that is just not anything to write home about. And I know a lot of you folks listening to this that are really involved in fitness, like we've all been burned, right? You're like, took your mom and dad you were 15 years old on Christmas, you know, to Walmart and you were like, can I have protein powder? And mom was like, I don't know, it's got chemicals. And dad was like, you're gonna play football next year, right? And you're like, yep. And he's like, all right, I'm get this one. And you eat it and you mix it and it's clumpy and you drink it. This is basically my childhood. And then like three weeks later, you're like, uh, I guess it's doing something. And you really just can't tell. And you don't take it for a while, but you eat lots of mom's home cooking and meat and milk and you lift weights and you make the best gains ever. And you're like, I feel like I've been lied to, right? We all know that, but a ton of people don't know that. And that's why this video exists. Now, there are some grains of truth to the fact that supplements do work, right? First, there are a few peripheral supplements, not in that confirmed category, with maybe effects or effects in special applications. Beta alanine might be okay for a repeat endurance if you're a wrestler or 400 meter run or something like that. Citrulline malate, not doing so well in the research literally, but it's got a pretty decent research volume now and it might do some good things for hypertrophy and performance. Fish oils, they're up and down, but they might be a small net balance. Various healthy fat supplements might be a decent idea. And when needed, fiber supplements may have their place. When needed, which is usually uh, almost never. And the other supplements listed, creatine, whey, stimulants, et cetera, they do work. So it's not like all supplements are bullshit. It's just a really tiny effect in the grand scheme and it's barely noticeable for most people, especially like, you know, stimulants make you feel wacky. For sure, it's not a mild effect, but what, how is that gonna change your body over the long term is really what we're talking about here. Like, yeah, you may feel like God for three hours after taking a pre-workout, but how much more magnitude of growth stimulus did you engage, did you activate during that said workout? workout? And the real answer is maybe this much more, a tiny bit. It's just like, you don't look at a guy who's Jack. You're like, bet he takes a lot of pre-workout. Like, no, he's taking some other shit. You feel me? Pre-workout's not bridging that gap. So yeah, they do work. It's just a tiny amount. So there is a little grain of truth to there. Now, number four, lastly, best practices. Let's round this out. Two part focus here. First part, you can choose to use a few, a few of the effective subs. You can absolutely use them. I mean, we're not saying we're not anti-supplement, all right? I'm not anti-supplement. Supplements work. We just you have to understand how much they work, okay? And it's not much. So it's best to approach them with, first of all, realistic expectations. Like if you're looking at a bottle of whey protein, like if you're 13 or 14, you're looking at a bottle of whey protein with stars in your eyes, it's just part of growing up. It's adorable. I'm not going to break your heart. I'm not going to tell you Santa's not real either if you're six years old, you know? But if you're like 23 and you're looking at a thing of whey protein, like, here we go, baby, gain time. 
you, you need to be washed clean of that expectation. It's just, it's just, it's just not going to happen that way for you, right? If you take them regularly as instructed, the people ask me about creatine all the time and I'm like, okay, yeah, you have to take it essentially daily, five grams a day for months. And then it works, uh, you know, decently well. And they're like, oh man, like I miss it all the time. I miss doses all the time. What do you think? And I'm like, if you miss creatine doses, it literally has zero effect. An acute dose of creatine does nothing, nothing. So if you, it's not like pre-workout where you take it once, you're like, ah, you take creatine once and nothing happens to you. It's a matter of building a cellular, intracellular concentrations, which takes multiple doses to do. So it's just not going to work. So you have to be consistent if you're going to do it, realistic expectations, and manage going off, uh, coming onto them well and off of them well, coming onto them gross. Stimulants, for example, uh, you don't need to go to pre-workout right away. You can just do like Diet Coke or coffee or something with caffeine. And then when you need it, you up the stimulant and then, you know, you go to a pre-workout, maybe you do half a scoop. And then maybe a couple months later, deep in no cut, you do a full scoop or a scoop and a half worked up to it. Don't take it when you're supposed to be uh, sleeping a few hours later because you won't be able to sleep. It'll screw up your recovery. And then once you're done cutting, you switch back to massing, go back to coffee or Diet Coke or something, and then wean off a little bit, give your body a break, and then get back on when you need to, right? So just using them, especially stimulants, all the time, it tends to negate their effects to some significant extent. So if you use them properly, they can be of benefit, of benefit, small benefit, but nonetheless benefit. You don't need to use them. You don't have to use them, but they can help. Here's the thing though, how are they gonna help? If your training is fucking rock solid and you're kicking it in the gym, consistent and hard with adequate recovery, and your diet is so important, right? A multivitamin, a few protein shakes, and a few doses of pre-workout, maybe creatine, you're damn near squared away with all the supplements you need to take. If your diet is good, you're gonna see great gains. And this should have been a myth of its own. I didn't put it in, but I'll say it now. If you think supplements, are going to replace a good diet or replace sleep and rest or replace training, you've got another thing coming all together. Precisely the people that ask you and I about what to do in the gym are gonna be the people that plan five workouts a week and make two or three. You know these motherfuckers. They're the ones asking you, hey man, what brand of creatine do you take? You know what brand I take? Get the fuck out of my face. See you guys next time.